good starting off point Morning. is the NASDAQ 100. You've, you've given our team some of your charts. We're going to flash the NASDAQ on the screens for our viewers right now. Just take us through the key levels you're tracking right now on the NASDAQ 100. Yeah, I think that the first key level to understand is the 15,200 to 15,300 area, which is basically the February and March highs that we made in 2022. And that's where we've started to see this uptrend hesitate and stall at. And, and we do think this is a logical place to digest the impressive gains that you've had uh, year to date. And where we see the downside risk is back to the 50-day moving average, uh, which sits around the 14,000 area. So it's not a uh, reversal and breakdown of the trend. It is a correction back to that 50-day moving average, uh, which sits around that 14,000 area for the NASDAQ. And, and Lawrence, I mean, all, you mentioned a lot of it has have been fueled by the whole AI trade. And mm -hmm. we were just talking to our colleague Annabelle about, look, maybe it's time to diversify away from these kind of mega cap tech stocks. But you look at something like NVIDIA, which has been the poster child of AI. I, what, where is support now for this stock? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting setup when you look at that NVIDIA chart because uh, what we've been flagging is the first time for the uptrend since January you've started to see some slowing upside momentum. And how we define that is the rate of change looking at an RSI failed to confirm the highs that you made in June. And, and if you go back since 2018, you've had six of these occasions and you've had at least a time-based correction where the stock consolidates in a trading range. And, and where we see the key le level for that type of consolidation developing for NVIDIA right now is between... 345 and $370. So that's where we think the immediate sort of downside risk is. But that should prove a very key support level for the stock then to consolidate and try to set the platform for the next leg higher. So like uh, the NASDAQ, where we see 14,000, uh, the short-term downside risk for NVIDIA, we see 345 to $370 as that uh, key uh, support area. Lawrence, I'm not sure if we've we, we flagged this uh, to you, but I'll, I'll ask you anyway. Let us know. If you, have you done any work on the S&P 500 since we're talking to you as equities here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, we track these markets on a, on a weekly basis and, and publish reports on that. Okay. So if you look at the S&P daily chart, your, your key support area, again, includes the 50-day moving average, but also the top end of the trading range that you've had uh, since uh, January this year. And that comes through at the 4,200 area. So the, the old saying mm. of uh, old resistance turns into support, that, that's the key level that the S&P needs to hold to sustain the breakout from uh, the trading range that you formed from the fourth quarter of last year into the second quarter of this year. All right. Another outperformer this year uh, has so far, Lawrence, is, is the Nikkei. I want to get to more yes. on your analysis mm. uh, of the region here right now. Given that we've seen foreigners really start to withdraw you know, their funds away from this market the first time in, what, 13 weeks or so, how tired is this market right now? Yeah, well, it's the first time we've seen a change in behaviour. Uh, basically, since the breakout that we got in uh, April, May this year, every pullback has been limited by support provided by the 10-day moving average. And what we saw on Friday last week was the first close below that 10-day moving average. So, again, it does increase the risk of a pullback. And, and where we see this pulling back to, uh, again, is the 50-day moving average, but also the highs that you made in 2021. So we're talking about a level between 30,700 and 30,800. From a longer-term side, the breakout, that we've seen in, in the Nikkei actually still gives us an upside target of 35,900. So we think this, again, is a tactical correction back to the 50-day around that 30,900, and then you get another push up to 35,900 for, for the Nikkei.